Now, one of the questions I was asked recently is, Odetta, I'm doing everything to be successful. Why am I not successful? And there are many reasons why you're not successful. And a lot of people will say it's because you're lazy. But believe it or not, a lot of the persons that I am having these conversations with are not lazy. They're giving their nine to five job all they've got or whatever it is that they're doing to make money. So what I'm about to share with you are reasons why you're not successful that don't include being lazy because I genuinely don't think that that's the primary reasons or reason. I'm also going to share with you how to overcome each of these issues that you may be facing that stand in between you and your greatness. So the first one is pride and ego. And this is such a big one. Do you know how many people allow their ego to get in the way of their success or to get in the way of them living in abundance? They don't want people to see them doing certain things that they think is below them. As an example, when I was a vice president in a Fortune 500 company, one of my side hustles was I had a business where I sold clothing. And what I would do is I would wear the clothing to work. My staff members would say they like it. And the policy said there was no soliciting at work. But what I would do is pile up my trunk with all the clothing in it. And then I would park outside at the gate of work outside of the premises. And when my employees came out, they would patronize me and buy stuff from me. Now, it's not that I had to do it. I said I was a vice president in a Fortune 500 company making a six-figure income, but I've always done side hustles. But those, so, those same employees who were buying from me, who were some of them at the entry level, would never have done something like that because they would be ashamed of it. I talk about things like selling candy to make money, which I've done in my old age here, many people would be ashamed to do things like that. Even something like YouTube, I've recommended persons who have been laid off from their job to take the knowledge that they have and to monetize a channel with it, and they're hesitant. And I, I can't see, to see if you guys see me. And I believe that the primary reason that I believe that the primary reason why they're hesitant is because they're ashamed of what people are going to say about them. So to overcome this, the first thing is you need to be confident enough to not allow your ego and your pride to get in the way. The second thing is you need to be unbothered and you need to not care about what all these people whose opinion, by the way, you're worried about, who don't help you to pay those bills when they're due, but you are so concerned about their opinion that it stops you from doing that thing that will allow you to pay your bill. You need to block out the noise. You need to ignore those people who you believe will not endorse what you're doing. And because of them not endorsing it, you allow it to stop you from progressing. And I know this is not easy. It took me a long while to not care what people have to say or think about me. And I may have to do a whole nother video on that. But that's the first thing that you need to address. The minute you get yourself in a place where people's opinion of you doesn't matter, you're going to become unstoppable. I promise you. The second reason is that you may... You're indecisive, and this is something that I struggle with. Do you know how many times I'm trying to decide on something, even something like where to eat, and I'm there thinking, what do I feel for? What do and it takes me such a long time until sometimes the eating time goes right by. Indecisiveness is actually what causes stagnation. If you can't make up your mind to do something, then it's stopping you from achieving your greatness. And one of the reasons why we're indecisive is because we fear that when we do that thing, it's gonna result in failure. And because we don't wanna fail, we stay away from deciding. Well, that's the worst thing that you can do to yourself because by not deciding, you make absolutely no progress. To overcome it, 
you can use pros and cons lists. My God, I use them every day. If I'm to decide on something, if, even if it's not a major decision, I'm going to do a pros and cons list. These are all the reasons that I should do this. These are all the reasons I shouldn't. When I was getting a divorce from my first marriage, I did that and whoop, the light bulb went off, packed my bags and left. The second thing that you can do is you set deadlines. If you set a deadline for yourself, then you have to decide fast and then it prevents you from overthinking because you need to make things happen right away. You also need to learn to trust your instincts. You see, a lot of people will tell you that that thing in your brain or that thing in your head, that's the voice or the thing in your gut, because sometimes we feel the nervousness in our gut, right? Wherever you're feeling yours, when it tells you that something is off, you probably should trust it and not move forward. But when it tells you that something is good, but that nervousness is out of fear, block out that fear and move forward. You also need to break down your choices. If you can create a decision tree of, you know, let me start with a smaller decision or the impact that's going to be least or the thing from the decision that's going to be least impactful, evaluate it. It will allow the decision making process to go a little bit faster. And even if it's at the same pace, you'll feel a little bit more comfortable about your design, your decision, that is. The next reason is you lack clarity. I've been working on a financial planner for almost a year now. And the reason why I haven't moved as fast as I wanted to is because I don't have a clear vision of what I want to be included in it. That happens a lot when we're pursuing a goal. We don't, we know what we want to do, but it's not clear in our thoughts and our minds. And that becomes the biggest obstacle to us moving forward. Do not let a lack of clarity get in the way of you achieving your goals. So you're going to define your goals. You're going to write down what you want to achieve and you can do so in details. And by clarifying your objectives, it's going to help you to create a path. Then you need to visualize success. What does the future look like with this thing that I'm doing? So I need to envision who is going to use this planner. What are they going to want to do with it? And then it will give me clarity in the moment as to how to design it. And remember, you can also seek guidance. Consult a mentor or a coach and they'll help you to get a clear secondhand and outside perspective. The next reason why you're not successful, and it's not because you're lazy, is because you're in a hurry. You remember that saying that we used to say, which is patience is a virtue? I think that is, it's lost its, it's, lost its significance. Everybody wants instant gratification. It needs to happen right now, not tomorrow. Hence, put in your food in the microwave, and in two minutes you have a microwave dinner. And hence, picking up your phone and touching a button and sitting in the comfort of your living room until the cab comes and you get the notification from Uber or Lyft or whichever one that it's outside and you walk out. Versus back in our day, you want to see us out there flagging down the taxi and hailing the cab. Not that I miss that. But we used to have to get dressed ahead of time, pray and hope that we catch a cab to get to where we're going. The thing about instant gratification is that our expectations of life is skewed. We now expect that everything is going to happen right now. When you're in a hurry to achieve your goals, you cut corners. And sometimes those corners result in you being unethical. That's the first thing. Second thing is you're going to choose the easy way. And here's what I have to tell you, and I see this a lot on my other channel, Rockstar Academy, where if I put a video out and I say some work is required, half of the people who typically watch, they don't watch because they're looking for easy money. But what you have to realize is that anything that's easy, everybody's doing it. So it's oversaturated. It's not likely going to result in the kind of success that's life changing, or it's not going to make you the kind of money that can lead to financial independence. It's the things that require effort and the things that require time, not that rush that you're on or that immediate gratification. It's the thing 
that requires an investment of time and effort that's going to give you the greatest reward. When you are attempting to do things fast and you quickly get disappointed by the results, you absolutely get to a place where you do nothing at all. Now, here are some ways to overcome it. You can practice patience, and I know that's not easy, but by setting goals and having milestones leading up to the goals that you celebrate, it will feel like you're making progress and patience will be more, you know, patience will be more practical or attainable then. The other way to approach this rush is to focus on one thing at a time. Prioritize your task and avoid multitasking to maintain focus. Now, the next reason why you may not be achieving success, but again, you're not lazy, is because you think too small. I've often heard the saying, and I've used it a lot, that if when you tell your friends or your family members your goals, they're not laughing at it, it's not aggressive enough. I remember as a child, I told my family members, living in a board house that was deteriorating, holes in the ceiling bigger than the ones in the floor. Holes were all over. We used to use pots to catch rainfall whenever we had light rain, not heavy rain. Imagine me being born into poverty, saying to my family, when I grow up, I'm going to build a mansion that all of us can live in comfortably. And this is going to be eight, nine bedrooms somewhere in that region. They're going to laugh at me. Where am I going to get the money from? But that's when you know your goals are aggressive enough. The issue is many of us think small. And what you focus on is what is rather than what can be. You know how many times I'll post something on my channel that's an opportunity that other people are using to succeed. And this is my other channel. And somebody says, oh, but this doesn't work. You see, the issue is because they can't get it to work or because it doesn't work for them, they believe it doesn't work or they convince themselves that it doesn't work instead of accepting their limitation and making a decision if they're going to learn from it or they're going to allow it to stop them from achieving their goals. What is rather than what can be? If you're focused on your current situation versus who you can become, then you're gonna run into many issues because the future and the fact that you can change your mindset and change your life is what matters. So instead of thinking about how big you can be, you are entangled in how small you are today. And this limits opportunities. Here are some ways to overcome it. Dream big. Envision the larger impact of your actions and aim for ambitious goals. You also can engage in new experiences with people who inspire you to think bigger, like a coach or a big brother or somebody who has more of an optimistic thought process. Now, the next one is you are in comparison mode. Ask yourself this question. When was the last time you didn't compare yourself with someone else? We do it all the time. I mean, you would be on social media looking at someone's feed and you think, oh my God, I wish I had that or that could be me. Or It's toxic, toxic. These comparisons, however, aren't usually apples to apples. You starting out in your job sometimes are comparing yourself to someone who has been working for 20 years and have a house and a vehicle and you're there thinking, why am I not them? Because you haven't invested the time and effort that they have. Everybody's journey is unique. And what might work well for you will not work for the other person. So why are you comparing yourselves to them? Instead, what you can do is focus on your journey, recognize that everyone's path is their own, create your own path, and limit social media because I realize that it can have a huge impact on most people's mindset. What I do, even though social media no longer influences me, probably in my 20s when they had high five, I would go on it, but it wasn't an influence. But for those who are still influenced by it, you can curate what you see. Only if you see content coming in that you don't want to see, click on show me less of this. Subscribe to people that will inspire you in a positive way and not trigger you to be somebody that you're not because you're comparing yourselves to them. 
And the next reason is you're doing what everybody else is doing. You see my cup here, and this is the mantra from my channel, we do not do normal. Normal results in mediocre, and we cannot be average and achieve our greatness. And by doing what everybody else is doing, or what is trending, you limit your potential and you limit your ambition. So what you need to do is to be authentic. You need to look for new ways to solve problems and approach challenges from a creative perspective. So innovate basically and differentiate and also challenge yourself. Regularly step out of your comfort zone to explore new possibilities because that will help you to grow. And the last reason is you are trying to be perfect. And perfection is not what I recommend. I recommend progress. Because you know what? Perfection will come from practice. And sometimes we have to start before we are ready. And that's the way to overcome it. Forget about being perfect. Focus on starting and getting things done. Take care on yourself and walk good.